Alright, now this video will show you how I made a switch panel for my Cessna using a USB keyboard emulator. Alright, to make this panel, I've used this. This is a Teensy 3.5. I've used a 3D printer to print this, but this is probably not going to be my finished product. I've used seven switches. Now, these are just low voltage switches, you know. And I've got this. It's a rotor encoder. Now, this rotor encoder is the trim wheel. Now, this, each different switch will represent one of the switches across the front of the Cessna. Let's look at the code and the wiring. Alright, so Arduino code has three parts to it. It has a setup section. Now the setup is what happens when the Arduino or the Teensy or the board that you choose gets power to it initially. As soon as it gets power to it, it runs this setup code. So if you have to set a state for anything, you know, like turn the serial ports on, um, set pin states and all that, it happens here. Then you have what's called the loop. So the loop is the main part of the code that gets executed again and again and again, hence the name loop. So what actually happens is it runs through the, runs through the setup, then starts the loop. Now once, it's, once it completes the loop once, runs around and goes again. So if you put stuff in there, it'll just do the same thing over and over and over. Right, so the other part is everything outside those two. So that's where you designate what libraries you want to use. Now a library is say like a dictionary that you can look up to work what see what things are and what they do. So like the definition or that sort that sort of thing. Now um then you can set uh, variables that can be used in either the setup or the loop. Now a variable is like a storage container and there's different types of storage containers. All right, but we're not gonna go into that. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through the code that I have on my Teensy. Now my Teensy is working as a keyboard. So the computer when it's plugged in, this thinks it's another keyboard plugged in. So each switch represents a key on the keyboard or a series of keys. All right, so first up, you can see this hashtag include. Now that is telling um, the computer or the Teensy to use the encoder library and the keyboard library. All right, so I've got seven, uh, seven switches on my panel. Now each one of those needs a, a state when it starts. Okay, and they also need to be declared. So it needs to know they exist and where to store the condition of those switches. Now that's these. I've got also, I've got the encoder. Now the encoder is what I'm using as a trim wheel. All right, now I've got the setup part. Now because I've got my seven switches, I need to set the state of those pins for the switches to be. So I'm using the pins five through 11. Now those pins, I need to be pulled up. So that way when the switch is closed or on, uh, the pin gets pulled down. So it goes to zero volts. I've got this thing called long, uh, this is a long, so it's a type of storage container. And I've got something called old position equals zero. Now this is for my rotor encoder, so that's the trim wheel. So that it needs to know where it was and where it's gonna be now. So first, then the loop starts. Now the first thing in the loop is my encoder. So now what it's gonna do, it looks if the new, the new position will equal where it is. So the encoder knows where it is on its own. And then it can send that information back to the Teensy or the Arduino. So it's gonna look at the new position and if it's not equal to the old position, it will run some code. So that's what these two if statements are. So if it's less than, it presses keyboard, keyboard button seven. If it's greater than, it presses keyboard button one. And then it saves the old position as the new position. So when it goes and hits it again, it checks if it's the same. So if it's the same, it doesn't do anything. 
Then I've got a small delay so you don't spam the switch because what actually happens is you know it, it gets annoyed if you hit it too many times. It won't work properly in um, in the game. All right, now I'm not going to go through every switch, but uh, they're all the same. And what I've got is just a number different in each of them, and the, and the keyboard command. So again, I need to look at where the switch is because it's not a push button switch. A push button switch would be different. A push button sw switch pulls back to the original state. So every time you push it, you could do something and then you don't have to look at it again. Because a switch sits in that state, you don't want the code being executed every time it runs past it. So again, what I have to do is I look at the state of that switch. Now if the state of the switch does not equal the previous state of the switch, I so it does not equal the current state. So so if they don't match up, it's going to run the code. So the previous state now equals the current state. So it knows that it's done it, it's changed it, and then it's gonna run the code based on the fact that it's changed. Now what it's gonna quickly do, because the switches operate like a push button and come out, it's gotta push it in and then release it again. So what it's doing is it's setting, the set modifier is used for special keys. So set modifier control and then I send that control, and then I quickly press the L. Now this is really fast when it does this. Then it waits 50 milliseconds. Then it and then it tells the computer, it sets the new state for the set modifier. So you can put multiple multiple keys in this modifier, like you can put the alts and the controls, the shifts. That's what that's used for. Then you send it. So when you send that, it releases, it's gonna set it to zero, so take it off then it's gonna release the L key. Now the difference between each of the different switches is this. Now this digital read five is looking at pin five. Digital read six down here is looking at pin six and so on seven. Now because I need a new variable for each of them, you can see this one is nothing, this one is one, this one is two, and it goes all the way down to six. So zero through six, that's all my seven switches. If you wanna add more switches, just keep going add a seventh and an eighth and a ninth. All right, and you can see, if you do that, you just gotta add them back up here. So if I want to add another switch, I create current switch state seven equals zero. I could just cut, copy and paste it down here and change that number to seven. And same goes with this. So these two represent the one switch, these two are the one switch and so on. All right, so I'll link in the comments a sheet, uh, a web page that will have all the different uh, keyboard commands that you can use and how you can do it, like a bit of a tutorial on its own. Now these ones here are just the Cessna control panel across the bottom. The only one I don't have is the dome light. I couldn't find in the in the in the manual for the game or in the help file for the game. I couldn't find the, the key designation for the dome light. So if you can or you know it, can you please put it in the the comments below? I'd really appreciate that. All right, now I'm gonna quickly go through the drawing. Now, so now this drawing represents how you would wire it and terminate it to have the setup that I have and the setup that runs with the code. Now, I've got all the different switches and I have the rotor encoder. So this is the trim wheel over here. These are all the switches for the panel. Now, you can see the, the natural state for this switch is open. So when you put the switch in, that bar connects, so it connects this this wire to this wire. That's how basically a switch will work. All right, so you can see each individual switch rolls down to underneath here. And you can see here, you know, this is pins five through 11. Now you can see, if you get, if you buy a Tensi, you can see a pin out for it and you can work out which of the different pins. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single one, but this here, here is the USB, so this is where USB plugs in. Now, I have a 3.3 volt line that runs all the way up here to the rotor encoder. Now that gives it power, because you remember the rotor encoder in itself knows its position. And then this one here, I'm not using, this is SW, but I've connected it in just in case I choose to. Now the rotor encoder has a switch in it, so you can spin it and push it down. So if you want to make it part of your nav panel or something like that, you can actually push it around and push it in and then it would like, you know, change the state of something. So you can have it switch your comms if you want, something like that. 
Now DT and CLK, now that is for the rotary position. All right. I've used a Teensy 3.5. There's other models available, but just bear in mind if you use others, I can't guarantee they're gonna work, but theoretically they should. Um, it's because the Teensy has its, um, works as a keyboard, whereas some other Arduinos like the Uno and that does not. Um, All right, if you have any questions on this, you can uh, leave them in the comments. I'll... One side of this switch you can see is all grounded with the rotary encoder ground. So you can join them all together and punch them down to here. There's a couple different ground points on the Tinsy, but this is the one I've chose. So you can use that one or you can use one of the others. All right, now let's see if she works. Right, apologies for the change in microphone. The, um, it's a bit hard to hook uh, the microphone into this camera. All right, so you can see, you can see I can flick, I'll go through them. And then the dome light, which I don't know the key for. All right, now, if this helped you, consider subscribing and hit that like button. Much appreciated. All right, I'll see you on the next one.